Since the time Spring Boot came into picture, one of the frequently asked questions is what is the comparison between Spring Boot versus Spring MVC? We covered the topic of Spring Boot versus Spring in a different video and in this video we want to look at Spring Boot versus Spring MVC. Answer, the simple answer is actually there is no comparison. Spring Boot and Spring MVC solve their own specific problems and they are not competitors to one another. So you are using Spring Boot Web, let's say, then you are using Spring MVC as well. So when people say Spring MVC, they mean the framework Spring, Spring Web MVC. And whenever you develop web applications in, with Spring Boot, you are by default using Spring MVC Web uh, as the framework to develop your web application. Okay, that's short answer. But in this video, let's look at a little bit more about Spring Boot versus Spring MVC. So we'll look at what are the problems they are trying to solve, what are the goals, and also we'll look at the fact that they have their own space. They're not really competitors to one another. We're going to use a website uh, that we have built for Spring Boot, and we're looking at Spring Boot versus Spring MVC versus Spring. So let's get started with this. The link to this article you'd find in the description. So the first thing you need to understand is if you're not an expert at Spring or Spring MVC or Spring Boot, there, there are good one hour video courses on these frameworks, which would really help you to get started very quickly. Let's get to the core problem that Spring Framework solves. The core problem that Spring gets to solve is dependency injection. Pre like before dependency injection, it was very difficult to unit test applications. 10 years back, I have no options to unit test at all or 10 or 15 years back to be specific. Before in de dependency injection, it was very difficult to uh, unit test applications. People used to write code like welcome service. Not people, even I used to write code like welcome service, service is equal to new welcome service. So what happens is the welcome service is a dependency of the welcome controller and the welcome controller is directly tied. It's tightly coupled with the welcome service. I cannot use any other instance. If I want to mock the welcome service, I don't have options. If this was an interface, I'm creating an instance of it directly in here. So if I wanted to use a different instance of the interface, no chances. Uh, you had to kind of do reflection or things like that to get around it. And you would not want to spend a lot of time doing that kind of things in your unit test. That's where dependency injection came in. Dependency injection came in and Spring says, Okay, you define your component. So you define what are your beans. So here I'm saying welcome service is my bean. And the welcome controller would see that. Uh, like welcome controller is saying, I need a bean called welcome service or Spring Framework, go and get it for me. So what happens? Spring Framework would create an instance of the welcome service and bind it in here. This is dependency injection, right? This is also called the notion of control because earlier, the welcome controller was taking control of creating an instance of the welcome service. But now, nope, dependency injection framework would do that for us. So the dependency injection framework would create an instance of welcome service and make it available to the welcome service in here as well. So now I can use the dependency injection framework to provide a mock. So I can say dependency injection framework, don't use this welcome service, use the mock which I'm creating right now. And that makes it easier to unit test. So is that the only problem that Spring Framework is solving? Nope. Spring also solves the problem of duplication and plumbing code. Spring JDBC, Spring JMS, I mean, people who have more than 10 years of experience would remember how things are done with JDBC. I had to write a 15 line, 20 line, 30 line method to do a simple insert or a select. Not anymore with things like Spring JDBC. Uh, we have moved further with things like ORM, JPA and Hibernate, but those are not your preferences, then Spring JDBC is a good choice too because there was a lot of duplication with typical JDBC, right? You had typical exceptions that you need to handle. You had a lot of uh, prepared statements and things like that, which you need to create to get uh, to do things. So all those things Spring JDBC el uh, eliminates. So that was the second problem with Spring problem, uh, like Spring tried to solve with different Spring modules, duplication and plumbing code. The other, problem that Spring tried to solve is this things which Spring MVC framework does, right? So Spring MVC is the core framework, core web framework. So there was this uh, model to MVC architecture, right? So you have the MVC architecture where I have a model view and a controller. Spring MVC is the most popular implementation of the modified MVC pattern, which is to have a dispatcher servlet or the front controller in front. So Spring MVC framework provides a decoupled way of developing web applications with simple concepts like dispatcher servlet, model and view, and view resolver. These are completely decoupled things. So your dispatcher servlet is not linked to model and view, and which is not linked to view resolver. So these are all having their own space, own responsibilities, and it made it easy to develop our uh, 
web applications. More than 70% of the applications which are developed in the last 6 to 8 years are using Spring MVC because it provides a good MVC framework. The problem that Spring MVC framework was trying to solve is to provide a good MVC framework. So why do we need Spring Boot then? The fact is with Spring MVC, we had a lot of configuration that we needed to add in. We needed to add in a view resolver, we needed to add in a web jar. Let's say I'm using a static dependencies, then I would need to use web jars. I have to configure a dispatcher servlet. I have to, let's say I'm using Hibernate or JPA, then I would need to do all this stuff. There's a lot of configuration that comes in and that's the problem that Spring Boot tries to solve in. The other problem that you would find with uh, like basic Spring MVC projects is the fact that I just can't, like Spring MVC alone is not sufficient, right? I'd need a few other frameworks. Let's say I'm developing a typical web application, then I would need a few more frameworks than just Spring MVC, right? So you need core Spring frameworks, like Beans Context AOP, you need the Web MVC framework that Spring MVC, you need Jackson for data binding, you need validation. So if I want to validate the validator on the server side, I need to use the validation API. So I need Hibernate validator and probably I will need a server to run the application on and also I need logging frameworks and all this kind of stuff. So each time I'm developing a web application, what I have to do is I have to make a choice of what frameworks to use. So I have to say, I have to decide, okay, I want to use this for validation, I want to use um, this for binding and things like that. That's the second problem Spring Boot tries to solve. So Spring Boot comes up with the solution called auto configuration and starters. So the starters, what they do is, once you include a starter in, so one of the starters that is famous with Spring Boot is Spring Boot Starter Web. So once you add the starter web into the class path, then it brings in all the dependencies that are needed to develop web applications. So I want to develop a web application. All that I need to do is add this dependency in and it brings in all the dependencies that I would need to develop web applications. So all Spring Boot related stuff, logging related stuff, you have Tomcat, embedded Tomcat as well, validation related stuff, and then you have the binding related stuff and the core Spring. I get all these for free. The second problem that Spring Boot also tries to solve is auto configuration. So I need a lot of configuration that you can see in here, right? Data source configuration, dispatcher servlet configuration, and also the view resolver configuration. So what Spring Boot does is tries to auto configure stuff. It says, okay, hey, you are adding in Spring MVC into the class path. Can I auto configure all the configuration for you? You are adding Hibernate into the class path. Then it means you need a data source. Can I auto configure a data source for you? So those are the questions which Spring Boot starts asking. King. To be really specific, the problem that Spring Boot is trying to solve is to develop applications very quickly. So we are in the world of microservices where we want to get started with developing an application in let's say a day or two. So I don't want to spend 10 days or 15 days or a month to start up with an application. I would want to be able to say, okay, I want to develop a web application. So how do I start up? So you just go, go in. So you just go in and say, Oh, okay, I want to use Spring Boot Starter Web. So once you do add in Spring Boot Starter Web, you'd get the dependencies for free. You would get all the auto configuration stuff for free. There are other Spring Boot Starter projects as well. So if you want to develop SOAP web services, then you can use Spring Boot Starter Web services. So similar to this, there are a lot of starter options that Spring Boot provides. And also Spring Boot provides things to monitor and trace your application. So if you look at the goals of each of the frameworks, Spring MVC versus Spring Boot, Spring MVC, the goal is to provide a good MVC framework. So it tries to provide a framework to develop your web applications in an easy way. So you can use Spring MVC to develop your web applications or REST services. It's the core framework. What Spring Boot is does is it, it, it sits on top of Spring MVC. So it takes care of the configuration that you would need. Like if Spring MVC needs a configuration, Spring Boot does it. And if there are other jars that you would need to develop web applications, Spring Boot provides starters through which you can, you can easily build web applications. And also Spring Boot provides advanced application monitoring things like Actuator. It provides developer friendly tools like App, Spring Boot developer tools. And it provides good integration with embedded servers. So you don't really need to develop a WAR file always you can develop a jar application and directly run it because the Tomcat server is directly inside the jar. So these are the things that Spring Boot does. 
and the scope of Spring MVC and Spring Boot are very different. So Spring MVC is a simple framework to develop web applications whereas Spring Boot is kind of a big environment on its own which is used to develop varied kinds of environments and the main aim of Spring Boot is to help us develop applications. At In 28 Minutes, our focus is on making you an expert at Spring Boot. We have created a complete website on Spring Boot at www.springbootshutorial.com. The link in the description of video would take you to a page where you find details of all the courses, videos and the articles we have created on Spring Boot. If you love our videos, you would love our courses too. Our courses have great reviews on Udemy. You can see some of the reviews in here. And there are also articles on basics of Spring Boot, auto configuration, startup projects, startup parent, less services, web application, all the code examples. We have Maven projects which are present which you can directly import into Eclipse and start running them and other references as well. This page would be a great start for you to become an expert on Spring Boot. You might also want to visit our website www.in28minutes.com all other courses other than Spring Boot as well. Thank you for all the support you are providing us. We would not have grown to 52,000 on Udemy. We would not have such great reviews on courses on Udemy without your support. We would not have been able to grow to 28,000 subscribers and more than 3 million views without your support. We want you to learn and make best uses of all the courses that we have. Good luck and I will see you in the next video or the course. Until next time, here's Ranga from In28Minutes signing off.